हेलो हेलो असलाकुम कैन यू हेयर मी मेंटोरशिप ऑफ ओई सो Uh, today i welcome you all in today's webinar uh, whose basic purpose is for encouragement of students who are going to take upcoming exam of oet on november 5th 2022 so welcome all thank you all right so let's start with our session today so how many of you are appearing in the upcoming exam hello can you hear me yes we yes. can hear you yes we can hear you okay okay thank you uh, so my question was how many of you are appearing in the upcoming exam i have already raised my hand my exam is on 5 5th of november okay good luck so students we will start with our topic of discussion today and i am here to guide you uh, for some tips and tricks for the two of the subsets of oet which are listening and reading subtest i think most of the students find these very difficult to solve and is top score in these subtest is it so yes yes okay okay so don't worry inshallah you all will ace it with a very good score inshallah so the first sub test of the occupational english test is listening sub test as you all know and you will be allocated 45 minutes for this sub test total number of questions for this sub test are 42 which are divided in three parts a b and c so as per part a part a uh total number of questions in this part are 24 and this is basically a monologue there is only one speaker uh who will continue his conversation and you have to choose a blank uh among the statement so you have to be very attentive and more focused in this part as it is most top scoring it is just like fill in the blanks and uh, you should don't mistake and uh, make spelling mistakes don't leave any space blank and try to write the word or phrase you hear or write a synonym word just like sometimes we hear a word but sometimes we are not in our uh, consciousness and we lost uh, our consciousness level and we uh, think that we have heard the wrong word but it's not like that you can hello yes yeah we hear you yes we hear you all right all right sorry it's my mistake uh can can you see the slides no Sorry. Just give me a minute.
Now, can you see it? No, we can. Not yet. No, I can't. Let me just solve it. Can you see it now? Dr. Mariam, there is an option of share screen and you know, if you click it, then you will see the option of, you know, sharing the screen. Uh, yes, Dr. Romero, I have done this, but let me check again. Dr. Mariam, there is the main screen of the, you know, in which you are, you can see your picture and there is the middle option of share. It will be highlighted in green. If you click it, then you can see that screen option is at the end, third last. Dr. Mariam, can you hear me? Dr. Mariam? Uh, hi, Dr. Imai. Dr. Mariam has disconnected. Uh, she's joining in a while. Okay. So can I start or should we wait for her? Can I start my portion? Let's wait for her. Okay, sure. Should I stop sharing my screen? I was just helping her. Hello? Yes, Dr. Mariam, you can start with my screen sharing if you are easy with that. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Mayor. Yes. Okay, okay, so thank you. On. So, so I was telling you uh, that uh, the, the listening part A is just like fill in the blanks. So uh, you people don't have to leave any space blank as you will carry your marks. There is no negative marking in the paper. So whatever word you hear, try to write it. Okay. There is an other tip like follow the sequence. Whatever the speaker is saying, it is always in sequential form. So uh, if there is any uh, misstatement by your side, you can uh, jump to the next one with a sequence. It will help you. Okay. 
Dr. Mariam? Hello? Yes, Dr. Mariam, you can tell me to uh, turn the slides to the next slide if you want me to help you. Can you see the screen? Dr. Mariam, can you hear me? Hello, Dr. Omer. Yes, I was just trying to help you. If you want, I can open the slides and you can read them. You do you want that or you will open yourself? Yes, uh, uh, you have shared the slides as I have seen. Kindly uh, just turn the next slide. Okay. Okay, okay, thank Wait you. Okay, so just focus on the screen. Let's start from the beginning. Okay, no problem. So in OET exam, listening subtest is the first subtest of the exam. And the candidates will be allocated 45 minutes for this subtest. There are total number of questions 42, which are divided into three parts, which are part A, part B, and part C. So as per part A, uh, Dr. Mayer, kindly show the next slide. So. Part A is usually a monologue and total number of questions are 24. So you should be very attentive and more focused in this part as this part is most top scoring. Uh, these are filling the blanks and you should not make any spelling mistakes. And other tip is, and other tip is don't leave any space blank. It's slide number three, Dr. Omer. Next one, yeah. So you uh, don't have to leave any space blank and try to write the word or phrase, whatever you hear or whatever write a synonym word. Kindly follow the sequence as this, this is a monologue and the speaker will say in a sequence, uh, whatever line or a statement you miss, you can directly jump to the next so that you may not lose all the mask marks by missing the one question, okay? And uh, try to get all 24 corrected as it is easy to score. So this was all about part A. Now let's talk about part B of listening subtest. Part B is usually a dialogue. It is between two people and you will be given 10 seconds in each scenario or question for proper understanding. Like whenever the statement or a question is given, you will be given 10 seconds for your own uh, reading uh, and assessment of the answer. Follow the words of the speaker carefully. Next slide, please. Try to find most appropriate keywords. Okay, listen, keywords are very necessary because you can easily find the answer uh, with the help of keywords, which, which are present in question as well as in answer. So uh, I must say there is a trick like eliminating the unmatched option. Whenever you have find a keyword, then it will easy for you to eliminate the unmatched option. And it is best tip to reach the correct option. Like if you have, if you have find keyword in uh, option C, so you can easily eliminate option A and B because they are lacking keywords. So answer will be C, okay? So this was part B. And the next part C is usually a difficult one, but it is doable. It is consistent of 12 questions. You should go through statements and options carefully so that you may have proper understanding of situation asked in these questions. Uh, here also sequential order is necessary 
and uh, don't rush backward for the missed answer in any case. Leave it at the moment and mark it after completing the rest of the test. Because in this case, uh, as you have uh, uh, missed one question, if you rush backward for that question, you will lose mask for the rest of the questions. So leave that question and solve it at the end of the test. Don't miss your next question with a missed one. There is no negative marking as I have told you earlier. So don't leave any answer blank. Jump to the next in sequence. So with all these uh, guidance, uh, we have a proper understanding that there are few points and tips and tricks for OET listening. Like uh, there is no negative marking. You should don't leave any uh, answer blank. Number two, there you should follow sequence as all the conversation is in sequence. Okay. If you have uh, uh, left and missed uh, one question, then don't rush back backward. Try to solve the rest of the test. So it was all about OET listening. As I have discussed all the three parts with you. So is there any question you can ask? Or we can go to the reading subtest. Excuse me. Can yes. I uh, yes. How yes. many questions? How many questions in part B, and how much time is for it? Okay. Uh, part B is consistent of six questions. Okay. And the overall time I have told you that is forty-five minutes. This this these forty-five minutes are. Uh, given to you for all the three parts and you have to complete part A, B and C in these 45 minutes. It's, okay, it's totally so up to you. It's totally up to you in which, uh, in how many minutes you uh, do part one, in how many minutes you do part B and part C. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hello, awesome. ma'am. Uh so sorry, I couldn't attend the first 10 minutes lecture. Can I, um, can you guide me about a stuff that I have practiced some of the questions in which part A, uh, a sequence was really haphazard, like the uh, in the sequence, the, uh, the sequence in which the person who was talking wasn't given in the, uh, you know, the blanks that were given over there in that practice test. Like if he's asking about age, age is written in 17th blank and he's asking about disease, uh, disease is written before age like he's speaking age after disease and it is written before in the you know fill in the blanks does these kind of things yeah these kinds of kind of uh, stuff come in exam or did this is just to make give us tough time in the practice tests Dr. Okay, Malin, would right. you like me to answer this would you mind uh yeah sure yeah sure, sure Dr. Mm -hmm. you can Okay, dear students, sometimes uh, when you do the stuff which is not up to the mark and there are many much, you know, samples online, so you cannot say that it's an official thing or like that. When you're going to appear in the exam, you will have a very standard paper, so don't worry about it. And I would request Dr. Mariam to please carry on your session. We would take the answers at the end collectively. Okay, okay, sure, Dr. Mayor. So now we will talk about reading subtest, which is the second subtest of the OET exam. And uh, in this subtest, you will be allocated time of one hour. Total number of questions are just like listening, uh, 42 in number. So first part is part A and the total number of questions in this part are 20. Total time will be 15 minutes. This is the most easiest part, but time management is key to ace it. Be quickest enough in this part. Read questions first and then find answers. Don't leave any answer blank. Don't make spelling mistakes. You may lose mark in this way. Speedily answer this part as after 15 minutes, question answer booklet will be collected by the invigilation team. So, Part A is the most easiest and uh, you have to find answers by reading the question first. After 15 minutes, question booklets will be collected and you, have, uh, you may have no chance to write uh, the answers after 15 minutes. For part B and part C, you will be given an other answer booklet for solving it. So our next part is part B. 
total number of questions in this are six in number. As per part A, read question first and highlight keywords. Okay. Try to figure out keywords in the passage, but this is not always right. As sometimes options are given with keywords mentioned in questions, but answer is not correct. So it is necessary to understand the gist of passage and question as well. You should keep your brain and eye open at the same time. As I have told you, like try to figure out keywords. So example of questions are like, what is the objective of dash dash dash, whatever uh, the statement is, whatever uh, the thing is given in the question. If they are asking about objective of this, you may find out the objective of uh, the thing in the paragraph. If you tick the principal feature, you may lose your mark. If they ask principal feature, then you have to mark principal feature. You have to mark the option in which they are talking about principal feature. So that's why I said, try to keep your brain and eye open at the same time. So whatever is asked, you should answer the right one. So now proceed to part C. Part C is consistent of two extracts of eight questions each. It is usually a difficult one. And just like part A, it is also a game of time management. As part A, you will be given a time of 15 minutes and the rest of the time, which is 45 minutes, uh, you have to divide it in between part B and part C. So you should spare last 30 to 35 minutes for part C and try to complete part B in 15 to 20 minutes. Don't leave any question unanswered. Follow sequence in this part in paragraphs, keywords will help in reaching the answer. Okay, so don't panic, stay focused, be confident and good luck. Is there any question you can ask me at the end of the session? Hello, my name is Dr. Umair Ali and I'll be guiding you today regarding the writing and speaking subtest. So, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Mariam, for guiding us. And I welcome all of the students to this channel and this session of Med Exam Expert. We are here to help you. And today's session is all about summarizing what you people have learned. You know, we won't be discussing the basic things, we but we will be discussing those things those that matter. Okay. So basically, we are just trying to give you the gems of passing this exam. So, first of all, I would like to discuss about the writing subtest. So as all of you know that this is the most important part of the OET as well IELTS subtest and most of the people struggle with writing. So most of the students who gave us assessments, we offer a course of, you know, assessment of writing letters and I used to assess the letters. There were so many mistakes. And what I thought about is that to give you an idea that how you can ace this exam. This Webinar is not about how to write a letter. This is about the tips and tricks for the exam day. So whatever format, first of all, the most important thing is format of the letter, you know. So whatever format you have learned, you just memorize it. For example, when you start a letter where you have to write the date, where you have to write the address, where you have to write dear doctor, where you have to write the reference. So just make a format and memorize it then I would suggest you to stick to it because in the online, you know, samples, you see that there is a difference between the uh, format of the letter and, you know, you sometimes get confused. But once you have made your peace with the format of letter and you are comfortable with the format, you just memorize it and stick to it, especially the starting and ending lines. So do not raise anything in the exam. Instead, cut it off like this. So this is very important. I had my friend two years back who appeared in OET and he just couldn't ace this exam because he thought that the lines he wrote weren't up to the mark. So he started raising everything, you know, and what happened, it just made a mess out of the paper. So I would suggest you that you can simply cut those lines which you feel like aren't up to the mark. So you can cut it like this. So you don't have to raise. It will help you to save your time and your paper will look 
neat and tidy so are you guys with me are you listening to me yeah okay yes. thank you so much yeah it's clear today, today's session is very you know it it's very just a motivating session so just focus on the things i have tried not to you know make long list of slides i've, I've just given you a gist and summary of what you need to do and what you don't need to do so in the case notes you have to filter out the pathological findings i would suggest you do not write physiological findings only mention pathological findings you know at my med exam expert you know we offer courses and we take the letters for assessment and when i check those letters i the most common mistake was that the people are going to write on examination this 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 was normal so you don't have to write the normal findings only write pathological findings in the exam then double check whether you wrote the name of the doctor some students write the name of the patient in place of doctor's name so it might seem very silly but in exam as the writing sub test is at the last so you are you know very much tired mentally and sometimes physically as well so just focus on what you are writing and where you are writing it this this is a very simple mistake which most of the people make in the exam so if there are more than four visits try to write the findings of multiple visits collectively okay so basically what happens is that uh, some of the students you know they write that initially for example if the patient's name is john initially mr john presented on this date then second visit they will write on that date he presented with this then third visit he will write on that date he presented with this so if there are more than four visits try to write the findings of multiple visits collectively and don't mention the date okay then start ending and the body of the letter are marked separately so pay attention to all these parts this is very important starting is which in which you you mention the address reference dear doctor and date okay and salutation so this is the start and ending is last two concluding lines and yours faithfully or yours sincerely and doctor so the starting and ending matters as much as the body okay so if sometimes it happens that you know uh, you lost track of time unfortunately if it happens with any one of you so just complete your letter and be, leave it where it is and write the salutation at the end yours faithfully doctor if you don't write that you are going to lose major marks for the ending of the letter so body of the letter consist of the visits past medical social and medication history okay so body of the letter is marked separately so try to complete your letter 5 minutes earlier this is very important because you have you can proofread your letter in last 5 to 7 minutes if you are going to take all of the time writing the letter you might not find the time to proofread your letter and if you don't proofread read it you may miss very simple mistakes okay so this is very important to point out the silly mistakes you make in the letter proofreading is very important and i can't stress more about it so carefully confirm which type of letter you have to write so this is very important uh, sometimes the students uh, who sent me the letters i assessed them i i marked them sometimes they got confused whether it is a transfer letter or update letter or it is a you know you can say that referral letter so you have to carefully write uh, read the task at the end so don't get confused and don't ask that whether how will we know that this is a transfer letter or update letter in the official oet test it is written very clearly at the end where the task is written that you have to write a referral letter or transfer letter or update letter okay so this is very important so try to write the letter in 180 to 200 words so if you write the if you are going to write the normal findings you cannot concise the letter to 200 words so don't write as i mentioned in the previous slides don't write normal findings only only write pathological findings always write the letter with the lead pencil so i don't know uh, how many students write with the lead pencil or ball pen but i would strongly suggest you to use a lead pencil why so because if you feel like there is any mistake you can simply cut it or you can simply raise it but it is in the case with the ball point so start from extreme left of the paper so some of you might be thinking that what kind of silly tips are these but this is very important you know i saw some letters and students were leaving two to three finger 
tips in your space on the left side of the paper while starting a new paragraph. So you have to start every paragraph from the extreme left side of the paper and leave one line after every paragraph. And believe me, there were many letters I assessed in which there were not a single line left in every paragraph. So this is some basic thing. Take some candies, chocolates with you to prevent hypoglycemia. So this is, you know, a test of your nerves and test of your metabolism as well. You know, if you go to the center there, they ask the students to come one to one and a half hour earlier the exam. So make sure you take your water bottle and candies or chocolates with you. And if you don't take the water bottle, I think they provide the water there, but you have to take the so few candies and chocolates with you. So reach your center at least one hour before the exam. And I would suggest you that if you are going out of the city for the exam, or you are new to the city or you haven't seen the center. So do visit the center one day before as well. So in this way, you will know where you are going and heading on the exam. So that was all about writing. Writing is a very vast, you know, uh, subtest and it is its dimensions are quite, you know, borderless. But our focus was on the main tips and tricks for the test day. So Next module we are going to discuss is speaking. Speaking, I personally love this subtest because, you know, maybe I feel like that I have a natural connection to it. But let's discuss how you can do well at speaking on the test day. So first of all, refresh yourself after the three subtests as speaking is at the last one. So first one is listening, then reading, then writing. Then there is some break and then you are allotted a room and time with the interlocutor and you're going to have a one-to-one -one speaking session with that interlocutor. So during that break, drink water, drink tea, take tea and you know whatever suits you and refresh yourself. Double check with the management about the time and roll number allotted to your speaking. So, you know, you just have to make sure that what time your speaking is going to be. Some students are taken for speaking right after the writing subtest but some students can you know get the time of two to three hours after writing so first of all you will enter a room and an interlocutor will be sitting uh, beside the table and you just have to greet the interlocutor naturally okay and you have to be very friendly with that interlocutor before actual role play the interlocutor will ask you a few questions he and he will tell you that these questions won't be marked so request him to keep sync with your speed and accent this is very important you know don't be confused be confident when you sit you just ask that interlocutor would you mind keeping a sync with my speed and accent i know your english is very good but i would be grateful to you if you keep a sync with my speed and accent believe me if you say this line that person will be alarmed that this is not a normal person he is a very intelligent person so this can be very helpful and believe me, sometimes, you know, if you are not very good in speaking, uh, the interlocutor is speaking in a very fluent language and sometimes you don't even understand what the interlocutor said. So they are very friendly. You can just request them to be in sync with you. Try to master your introductory and concluding lines at the, as they matter the most. So in speaking, obviously, you know, the starting and ending matters the most. So your role plays will be recorded and they will be sent to the OAT centers for the grading. So obviously, if your introductory and concluding lines will be amazing, obviously you will get good marks. So you have to memorize a specific pitch. You know, there are online samples and, you know, we also guide students at med exam expert how to ace at OAT speaking. You can take one to one speaking sessions with us in which we will help you to speak fluently. And, you know, and we also offer the mock sessions in which you are just uh, going to take a mock session with the interlocutor and you will be graded and marked according to the standards of OET. So this is very important. If you are struggling with speaking, you can take one to one sessions with us. We can guide you to uh, how to ace this exam with flying colors. And if you don't know about the specific pitches, we are there, here to help you. So right now I will share some strategies with you you know, some golden points, how to ace at OET speaking. So first of all, you have to be very empathetic. Some of the students who don't know what empathy means is that you have to understand the problem of the patient 
and you have to make him feel like you are also suffering from that condition so you have to be very empathetic and at understanding in uk empathy is very important obviously in other countries as well but right now we are focusing on the doctors who are going to uk for plab so majority of the students are being guided regarding empathy so counseling is also very important you know you have to counsel the patient according to the disease he is suffering from you have to be polite politeness is very important you have don't have you don't want to be rude in oed speaking you know try to ask open ended questions some students you know they just they just speak 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 and don't listen to the next person so you always try to ask open ended questions open ended questions are like for example where are you feeling the pain is it above the you know is it above in the epigastric region or is it in abdomen you don't want to ask where is the pain you know you always give the patient options you always guide the patient to turn back to you to reply to you to give you feedback so in your in every answer of yours must be a question in this way you can ask open ended questions and why is it important it will create a fluency in the conversation ask associated features of the main problem so if sometimes you are going to Uh, you know get a scenario in which there are aren't many questions try to ask about the features of the main problem for example if the main feature is abdominal pain ask about its radiation about ask about its aggravating factor relieving factors you know association with the pain killers uh, is it responding to the pain killers you know associated with fever etc so that was all about the four sub tests and our team at med exam expert tried to guide you about the tips and tricks regarding the test you are going to take on 5th of the november and you know we are always here to guide you regarding all your sub test we offer multiple you know uh, packages individual packages as well assessments as well so we will guide you about that but please if you have any question we will start from the beginning if you have any question regarding listening you can ask now and dr mariam will answer them so students go on ask the anyone questions and try to be concise uh thanks a lot sir for a very informative session i would like to ask like for writing when we are writing a letter the format the end the body and the uh, everything matches as per the format but the language varies from the answer letter so that is okay if we go ahead with our own language which doesn't actually match with the answer letter it is quite different from that so would that be okay or not what do you mean by your own language like see if any any uh, like uh, any uh, format is being given and we have to summarize in the form of a letter as per the format of oet uh, uh what you call oet requirements but when we write a letter that doesn't exactly match with the answer letters given in the site sample letters so would that be okay if we go as per our own way or it should exactly match what is written there okay well your question is very vague i'm so sorry to say that but i would suggest you that you practice more and try to be formal and i would suggest you don't be casual as the letter is written in a very formal environment from doctor to doctor so don't write in your own language try to be as official and formal as you can and if you are having any problem regarding this then you can obviously get your assessment of letter you can always send us a letter and we will help you so we will take questions uh, in a sequence please students ask the students regarding listen, uh, questions regarding listening we are taking question regarding listening first okay so how can i send the letters for assessment we will guide there is a number written at the end at the end of this slide you can contact on that and you will be guided further okay can you see the number yeah this is double uh, plus double four yeah yeah you can contact on this so right now we are going to take questions on listening okay so students do you have any question regarding listening and i would request uh, dr mariam to check the chat section if it has any questions regarding to listening and reading
Yes, Dr. Mera, I have checked. There is not any question regarding listening and reading. Well, there are questions in regarding speaking subtest. Okay, I will deal to that. So students, you are being given the time to ask any questions related to reading and listening. If you have any, please ask. Yes, sir. listening is uh, very difficult for to understand the pronunciation. Uh, reading also, uh, reading also, part B and C also are very difficult to that. How was to uh, improve that part B and C reading? No. To listening that. Uh, Sorry, can you repeat your question? Dr. Mariam, the student is asking that he is having problems regarding the pronunciation and the listening subtest. Okay. Uh, as your question is regarding the, uh, you have you may have difficulty in pronunciation. Basically, you have difficulty in understanding whatever the speaker is saying. So my advice for this is, as uh, you practice more and more tests, you will be able to understand whatever the accent because there are a number of different accents uh, in the speaking subtest and uh, a candidate may be aware of all these and uh, you may practice more subtest i think for listening there should be 40 to 45 maximum test for practice so then uh, it would be easy for you to uh, understand whatever the speaker is saying thank you dr mariam any other questions regarding reading and listening uh, reading also but uh, B and C also very difficult uh, that. Uh, part B and part C for reading? Yes, 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 ma'am. Part B and part C very difficult. Okay, okay. As I have told you earlier, uh, part B, uh, I have uh, advised you to try to figure out the keywords. Okay, uh, try to figure out keywords uh, which uh, the examiner is asking. So uh, I have uh, uh, exemplified you uh, with the um, examples like uh, what is the principle of the passage? What is the objective of this uh, the below mentioned passage? So uh, whenever uh, you have tried uh, to find the keyword, it would be easy for you uh, to um, highlight the, that keyword in the passage given. And that would be your answer. Okay, so Dr. Mariam is trying to tell you that are you facing a problem in uh, reading or listening subtest? You just have to practice. And regarding these two subtests, the practice is the most important thing. And the strategies discussed by Dr. Mariam, you, you, this video is being recorded and it will be shared on YouTube. So you can listen it again and again, and you can get the idea of how to ace it. Now I will take the questions regarding writing and speaking subtest. Um, uh, sir, I have a question regarding listening. Yes, go ahead. Uh, and, like, for example, we are taking the listening subset and while we are in a hurry, we have to write, uh, you know, in, in, we have a very short, limited time. For example, we have written something which is not uh, actually a right in spelling. There's a mistake or, or it, it's in adjoining handwriting and the examiner is not able to read it correctly. Are we going to uh, get a mark deduction there? Oh, all right. Uh, there is always a margin, uh, but please try to write in clear words. If you have uh, missed uh, one or two alphabet, then it's okay. Uh, it may be clear to the examiner that whatever the student has tried to write, but uh, it's not like that, that the word is con consistent of uh, 10 or 12 alphabets and you are just writing two or three alphabets, then you will surely uh, gonna lose mark, okay? Okay, thank you. So, any questions Welcome. regarding speaking and list, uh, speaking and writing? So, I have one question regarding speaking. Um, if the patient is now, if if the patient is coming uh, a second time to me, I'm seeing the patient is second time in hospital clinic. Then, what should be the introduction? Should I ask the name first or not? Well, obviously, you are going to ask <clears throat> the question that, uh, hello, my name is Dr. Omer and I'll be your treating physician for today. How may I address you? You keep the, your pitch the same. And after that, you can say that, oh, I see that you came for a follow-up and I have checked you before. 
so you had an appointment with me before you so keep your pitch always the same and modify the coming sentences according to the need of the scenario and what if the patient is in pre operative room and i am his uh, attending registrar and after few minutes he is going to get operated so what should i do should i uh, introduce some same like uh, should i ask the name of of the patient or no obviously you are going to start with the same and believe me this scenario is isn't going to be asked in official oit exam obviously if the patient is in an pre operative room if they will ask you to ask the question from the patient or his attendant obviously this is a speaking test you are going to have another person for speaking so don't worry about these such minor things and focus on doing more uh, you know or more stuff which is credible and is up to date don't focus on these minor things it means we should start i am your attending doctor today and you are going uh, what is your name and age please this type yes. of introduction yes yes always take always keep your introduction the same in natural i am trying to say this okay thank you so i will see the chat section any question regarding speaking and writing so dr nusha is asking is what about the transfer letter how is that different from referral or update or discharge letter so basically this question contains the difference between all the letters and it is outside the scope of this webinar and if you want guidance regarding this you can get a guideline in one to one session or you can take our course you know we can't discuss all the four letters format in such short time and regarding the risk watch no you cannot take the risk watch in the center it is handed over before going to the exam and there is a very big digital clock in every room do we get into loculator card as well no you only get the card of the doctor and you don't get the card of the patient so you have to be very perceptive that what the what is written in the patient's card so you have to be perceptive of everything and you have to take it step by step well dr nusha asked that uh, we were told we won't be seeing interlocutor it will be on audio well uh, if we talk about oit on uh, paper in most of the centers they have interlocutors but if you are going to do with an audio and if you have a center in such a region then it's fine you just have to focus on what the interlocutor is saying everything is the same yes dr mavi says for computer based you won't be seeing the interlocutor thank you for confirming that so dr nusha asked regarding speaking how many open and close ended questions should we be asking i mean the ratio of both whether more close and a few open or equal so i think this is not a very good question and it matters according to the scenario and don't overburden yourself about the quantity of the questions it is let it be the normal flow of the questions so mohammad ahmed asked but best sample to practice for listening having difficulty level same as exam so try to uh, solve the <clears throat> official samples of oit and you can also uh, visit our med exam expert website and you can take help from us then dr asan asked if audio flatter exceeds 200 words what impact does it have in our scope so i feel like that according to my experience if the letter is going to be you know around 200 to 220 words it's fine but if you go more than that obviously it's going to be a negative doing having a negative impact on your letter so it means that you haven't concise the letter according to the requirement so thank you dr mavish for such good remarks dr ariba wants to join oit november practice batch please guide how to join so uh, dr ariba you can see our official number and you can contact us there yes obviously we are international and you can join us from everywhere yes you will get the recorded lecture on youtube dr riba ask letter assessment will be provided in the course of course you will be uh, you can see the details of the course and uh, our you know a relevant person will contact you and you can contact us at the number shown in the presentation
I will share the number here as well. So I would request uh, Ms. Ramesh to please share the number, official number of, you know, OET in this chat section and uh, our med exam expert uh, number in chat section. And someone asked that writing answers in listening the section, should I start with capitals or small? It depends on what the word is. So we are going to move forward in our session. That will be our question and answer session. So it is our OET live course and duration is one month. So in our live session, we are going to have 16 live practice sessions for reading four live sessions to cover all reading parts. Okay. Then listening four live sessions to cover all listening parts, then writing four live sessions for writing practice, speaking four live sessions to practice speaking with mentor. So you are be you will be having one to one sessions for speaking, and you will be given assessments of your letter, and for listening there will be live sessions and there will be assessments as well. Practice material will be provided to you. You will be reading exercises with answer keys, listening exercises with answer keys, speaking role play cards will be provided to you when you will be doing one to one session with us. And writing case notes can also be provided to you and add-ons. We have three letters writing assessment with proper feedback, study room guidance. We have WhatsApp groups. Then session recordings are accessible for later revision and we have 24 by seven technical support. So these are the numbers you can contact us as at this number on WhatsApp and you can get support from us at any time. So please join us for our live courses, for one-to-one -one sessions, for writing assessments, for mocks, you know, or if you don't want to take the whole course, you can join us for assessments even, but I would strongly suggest you to take this live course. It will definitely help you to ace your exam with flying colors. So thank you so much. Here's our number again, once again, and you can reach us here as well. So that was all about today's session. Thank you so much. And I appreciate Dr. Mariam. We did a great session and I hope that students learned something today. Thank you so much. Best of luck Thank for you. your exam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Could you please send to us uh, the recording session because I started late?